لها لهذا المؤتمر الهام الذي تتمنى له التوفيق والنجاح وتأمل أن يخرج بتوصيات هامة لصالح المرأة العربية والإسلامية وأتمنى لكم التوفيق والآن سأستأنف الجلسة بإعطاء الكلمة لصاحب السعادة مشعل حسين مليك مستشار رئيس الوزراء لحقوق الإنسان وتمكين المرأة بجمهورية باكستان الإسلامية وليتفضل Honorable leaders, ministers, distinguished delegates, first and foremost, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to OIC and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for providing this platform to member states to come together to discuss the issues of Muslim women around the world to foster unity, cooperation, empowerment, and progress within the Islamic world. I would also like to appreciate KSA and the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, for his dynamic role in enhancing the role of women upliftment according to the Vision 2030 policy, under which Saudi women witness enhancement in their status in the field of sustained development. Pakistan takes pride as one of the staunchest supporters of women's rights and women leadership. At the OIC, Pakistan has spearheaded various initiatives for women's rights and has convened ministerial conferences on women in Islam as the chair of the 48th CFM in New York. We will be hosting, inshallah, the ninth OIC ministerial conference on women. Ladies and gentlemen, the women of our era want to know the women around the world of all caste, color, creed, cultures want to know. The women that say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulallah, there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last messenger of Allah, want to know. The women of Palestine, the women of Kashmir want to know, as I, a voice of these women, Mishal Hussain Malik. Though an empowered woman of the 21st century, state minister of women empowerment and human rights, I'm also one of the worst victims of Indian oppression. I am a freedom fighter. Our family is at the forefront of Kashmir's freedom struggle for the right to self-determination against Indian occupation. But what a contrast. India has gifted our family with enormous titles Ladies and gentlemen, I am a half-widow, and my husband, Muhammad Yasin Malik, locked in Tehar death cell, is being hanged very soon, is a half-father, and our 11-year-old child is a half-orphan. We have not seen him since nine years and spent only 60 days together in a marriage of 14 and a half years. India has left us homeless, divided, we are living lives literally like refugees. We have witnessed various incidents of sexual harassments, tortures, arrests, attacks, and threats. Even our little daughter was not spared. She was sexually harassed, body searched, pamper stone when she visited her jail father in central jail of Srinagar at the tender age of two. This is the tale of every Kashmiri family under Indian occupation. I want to ask the world a question through this powerful platform that what more a price do the Kashmiri and the Palestinian people have to pay for being held hostage, locked up, kidnapped by a tyrant who is not willing to accept any ransom except for genocide through body bags and meticulously manipulating demographic changes 
in blatant violations of Geneva Conventions, international laws, and UN Security Council resolutions. For I, as a daughter of the Muslim Ummah, ask, where is my husband? Where is the father of Razia Sultana? Where is Muhammad Yasin Malik? A child deprived of hugging her papa for nine years? A man whose only crime is that he's peacefully, democratically leading the freedom struggle of Kashmiris? He's not just a freedom fighter or a political icon. He's the Gandhian of this movement, and he's a symbol of the peaceful solution. If peace is not a solution for the world, then definitely war is the answer between two nuclear countries, India and Pakistan. Let the world be witness today. Narendra Modi is the follower of the fa fascist RSS in Hindutva that wants to hang my husband, Yasin, in the coming months that he wants to silence one of the biggest democratic voices of freedom in the world, which is a basic fundamental right of any human being on this planet. Let the world be witness today that Yasin is innocent, along with thousands of other Kashmiri Hurriyat leaders and political prisoners locked up in various jails of India. Modi, if anything happens to my husband, you are solely responsible for this murder. I warn the world that the response of the Kashmiri people will be violent if this happens. There's a strong chance of converting our 99.9% .9 peaceful political struggle into a violent struggle, and Kashmiri people becoming suicide bombers, because no one is ready to bear the voices of peace. And same goes for Palestine. People are talking about the horrors of militancy of Hamas-Israel conflict and the destabilization of Palestine. My question is, how did we get here? Who is responsible for this? If the democratic voices of peace and nonviolence are killed, hanged, jailed, banned, silenced, if voices of pacifism are suffocated, then you leave these oppressed and cornered people with no choice but to choose violence as a path to be heard. I repeat, these horrors are the seeds that are sown with our own hands and this criminal silence of the world against the stopping of these war crimes. We are leading the world order towards a collapse as global peace, global economies, global security is directly linked to a peaceful settlement of Kashmir and Palestine issue. Muslim women and children of Kashmir and Palestine are facing gender-based violence, including sexual harassment, rape as a weapon of war, post-traumatic stress disorder, arbitrary detentions, molestations, trafficking of women, forced disappearances, socio-economic burdens, legal issues, fertility problems, high ratios of suicide and depression, threats, malnourishments, attacks of chemical weapons, lack of repeating. All these are defined as war crimes. So I request the honorable leadership of the OIC to respond to my plea to save my husband's life and of all the oppressed Kashmiris and Palestinians, as they are the most marginalized, vulnerable communities in the world right now. Pakistan has always remained committed towards supporting the legitimate freedom struggle of the Kashmiris, as per the UN resolutions, and has diplomatically, morally, politically always supported Kashmiris. Simultaneously, Pakistan also strongly condemns Israeli crimes against humanity, against innocent children, women, and men of Palestine. We demand an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, an end to the blockade of Gaza, full access to international humanitarian organizations to send medicine, food, and water supplies to the beleaguered people. We demand an end to Israeli aggression, a desecration of the holy places of the Muslim Ummah. And in the end, let us resolve that the value of the blood of a Kashmiri and a Palestinian is equally respected as any human's blood on this planet. Thank you. Shukran, Sayyid Mumutid, the Jamuri of Pakistan, Islamia. Walan al Kalima, the Sayyid Nurilda bin Tahmed Sahibuddin. Thank you. 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 Thank you.